Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Welcome back to my work apartment in Chicago. The last time we were here, we were talking about putting the U.S. on reproduction blankets. We're going to do that again today with a different blanket from a different original and a different stitch. This time the reproduction and the original come from Beth and Ben Tart, and the stitch is one of the four foundational stitches in sewing in the era. I always say, if you're going to teach someone to sew, whip stitch, back stitch, running stitch, and buttonhole stitch. Today we're going to work on the back stitch, and we're going to use the back side of it as that's how this blanket's U.S. was shown. We also have an opportunity to explore a couple of different ways to work with the blanket in comparison to what we've done previously, and we'll talk about those techniques as well. Before we can put the U.S. on, we need to know where it goes. They generally go in the center of the blanket, and that's really easy to find, and it hasn't changed since we were here last. Fold the blanket in half widthwise, then fold it in half lengthwise. At the end of the time, you're going to end up with the two folds right here, and this is the center of the blanket. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pin and just mark it like that. Now it doesn't have to be terribly exact, that's going to get you close enough to the center. All right, so we found the center of the blanket. We folded it out so we only have one layer of blanket. It's really embarrassing when you stitch through two layers of blanket and suddenly the U.S. is holding your blanket together and you can't sleep under it. Now we need to find where the U.S. goes on the blanket in relation to the center. The great thing is that Beth and Ben have told us where the center of the blanket goes in relation to their template. Each template has a plus on it. That plus represents the middle of the blanket. Now remember, we're going to use the back side of the blanket because the back stitch, it's not the main piece that you see, it's the back side. Each side looks different. You want the back of the stitch for the U.S. here per this original. In the past, we've told you to pin the entire template on, which would be simple. Put the plus on your pin, pin it down, and start to sew. But there's been one problem found that we can work around in this situation. Beth mentioned to me that people said that after they pinned the template on, sewed through the lines, and then pulled the template off and sacrificed it like a postage stamp, which we've talked about in other episodes, the stitching is loose because the thickness of the paper was there and ripping it out pulled the stitching up. This method of application of the template is great when you have three lines of stitching within a letter. In the case of the original Beth and Ben are working with, we're just going to stitch around the outline. So let's talk about two different ways to mark the U and the S on the blanket and be able to stitch it. You'll avoid some of those issues. What we're going to do is we're going to cut out the U and the S, and then we'll show you two ways to mark it here. If I cut it out, I'm losing the plus. Now what do I do? Let's show you. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a straight edge and I'm going to draw a straight line across the middle line of my plus. And that's going to go all the way through the template so I know where the middle of the blanket is. The second thing I'm going to do is find how far off the center line the letter goes. In the case of the S, it's about two and a half inches, and I'll mark that here. Now I need to do this again for the U. We will go ahead and take our straight edge up to the cross line of the plus, and we'll draw a line all the way across our letter so that we have a line that shows the middle of the blanket there. The next thing I'm going to do is find the edge of the letter closest to the center line figure out how far in it goes. In this case, it's two inches. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the letters out and we'll lay them out on the blanket. Let's put them on. There's actually two ways now. One is we could pin the template on and then stitch around it. The other thing is we can take Taylor's chalk and we can hold it down and we can mark it and then just have a chalk line to work off of. Both are solid ideas and I'm going to show you both because they're both useful. First, for our U, we'll go ahead and do the Taylor's chalk. First thing I need to do 
Here's my center line mark where that little piece of fabric is in the pin. I've got my lines for where center line was from the template. It's two inches off, so I'm going to set my two inches, touch it up, and use my ruler as a line to continue through. And there we go. Now, holding this down, I can take my tailor's chalk and gently just mark all the way around. Taylor's Chalk is simple to purchase at any Sewing Notion store, any big box store that has Sewing Notions, you should be able to find it too. It's really easy to get. The one thing I find working with Taylor's Chalk is it's not really like tracing with a marker. You're not gonna trace the whole thing at once. Little strokes are certainly going to help make it easier for you to work with. And when we pull it off, we see the U in place ready to be stitched. The second option we have is to pin the template on and then stitch around it. Same idea for setup. We're going to look for two and a half inches off center. I go ahead and line this up, slide it over so the stencil hits two and a half inches, and make sure that we are straight across. Okay, so Will, what if I'm not perfect? That template is slipping around on the blanket. I can't get it to sit still. Well, great. When you look at many of these originals, you see that the U.S. wasn't fastidiously put on by a perfect person with excellent stitching. The U and the S were trying to get put on, and these were going out at great volume to provide blankets to Union soldiers in the field. That's their job. If it's a little rough, if it's a little rushed, it fits the general feel of many of the things we see. In this case, we have it, and we're going to go and pin it on. Well, we have two different ways that we can see the U and the S on the blanket, and now it's time to sew. The back stitch. It's an easy stitch to do, and it follows something when you sometimes get frustrated that you talk about in the world. Two steps forward, one step back. Let's take a look. I'll grab an edge of this blanket, bring it up, and let's talk about how the back stitch goes. I'm going to use some red thread so that you have a chance to see. Like I said, our stitch length, what we see on top, or in the case of this on bottom, is going to be the finished edge of the back stitch, and it's simply two steps forward, one step back. So our thread goes in. Normally we come up from the underside, but the other side is going to be what we need today. So we'll let the knot here. Now I'm going to go where the knot was, and I'm going to go forward two steps. The two steps being from that point to where the thread came up and then the same distance forward. Pull through and this back stitch, the stitch behind, is what's going to show in the perfect world. Again, I left the knot here because we want the other side. I'm going to go in where the thread came out, jump ahead two, and the stitch on the back is going to make the stitch for the perfect world. Now, we don't exist in the perfect world. We exist in putting a U.S. on a blanket per an original. Again, I come back one step, go forward two, pull it through. Back one step, forward two, pull it through. Candidly, one other thing I could do is something that we've shown before. I don't think I would do it with the outline, but I would show do it with the template, and that is use a hoop to get things to lay out nice and flat. The fabric hoop is definitely optional, but if you're going to go ahead and put the template and pin it on like this, I think it may be a good idea. Again, we're going to go ahead and keep the knot on this side because this is the side that doesn't show or is the back side of the stitch. We're going to go one step back, 
two steps forward. Now, if you want to turn a corner with back stitch, you just need to come up to it. Even if it's one step back, one step forward, this gets you to the corner, and then you can turn and start again. There's our bottom line on the S. We'll just close that up a little bit, and then we'll get ready to turn. All right, so it's time to move over to the U. Again, we traced the template on, and now we're going to follow our chalk lines. So now we'll go back, which is our back stitch. Go back one, forward two. And we are off to the races down the straight side of the U. Well, the supplies are littered around here. You can see from pins to a yarn needle, a scissors, tailor's chalk, and some form of a measure with the stencils and possibly a hoop. I'll be very honest. When I worked on these two, I didn't like pinning the stencil on. For my money, I'm going to get a little bit of tailor's chalk. I'm gonna outline it and sew it that way. Much easier for me. Your mileage may vary. We've shown you two ways, plus you still have the way that we've shown in the previous episodes, pin the entire stencil on, sew through the lines, and then rip it out like a postage stamp. Speaking of those previous episodes, we've got the whole family here as it exists right now. We've got the back stitch shown backside up based on the original owned by the Tarts. The Rule of Paul blanket out of Gettysburg that was reproduced by Wamba and White. We have couching stitch. And then on my trusty Woodburn mount blanket, we've got chain stitch. When you talk about more than a million blankets in federal hands during the Civil War, and you talk statistics, this is not enough of a sample to be even worth discussing. But with as few originals as we've looked at, you already see a wide variety of ways to put the U.S. on. If you're a living historian, this tells you you have options to be correct to history. If you're a history buff, this gives you a wider look at what it took to spin up the war machine that was the United States Army during the Civil War. Either way, I hope you've gotten a richer connection to history out of it. We'll see you down the road.